Hello and welcome. I'm Darren Russell, Mark McDonald's Chief Digital Officer. I'm really pleased to be here today with Mark Enzer, our Chief Technical Officer. Today we're going to be talking about our response to the National Infrastructure Commission's call for evidence uh, on their technology study. Uh, and before we get going on this, I'd like to thank the team that's worked on this, uh, and particularly Andrew Zhao, who is our Emerging Technology Strategist. Uh, they've done some great work, some great thinking, uh, and hopefully some of that will uh, come out in this conversation. So, Darren, in, in this response, I guess it's important to set the context. Uh, so what kind of things do you think are the, the most important for understanding the industry content? So, with all of these things, when you're looking forward, it's really difficult to predict uh, what sort of technologies are, are going to be around in the future. And so, in setting the context, I think it's really important to look at the rate of change of technology. And we all know it's, it's changing at a phenomenal rate. And uh, I believe we have all of the technology that we need to completely disrupt our industry and add massive value to, to our infrastructure. So. As you look forward, you, you, you need to select types of technology that you think are going to really make a difference. So that's one of the, the, the complications. The other is that uh, the, driver, uh, the drivers are going to change as technology comes online and things uh, interact with, with each other. And so I think you've got those two contexts that, that make it difficult to predict. But I also think that gives us a real opportunity as we look forward because we need to keep our... Uh, ideas fairly broad and look at a range of technologies, making sure we maximise their, their use in the future to add this value. I, I think there's something to do with uh, the industry's readiness for accepting this, mm. uh, because it seems that there's an, an awful lot of technology coming through the, the pipeline. Mm. In fact, a, a massive proliferation of it, which is, which is a wonderful thing. Um, but then there's an issue about industry's readiness to actually accept it. Uh, and I, I think that we need to understand not just a technology readiness level uh, and what's coming through to market, but also understand the industry readiness level to accept it uh, and to, to get that driven through the industry and then provide value, hopefully, to the ultimate customer, which is what it's really all about. Yeah, I completely agree. It's all about adoption. I, mean, I think there's, for me, there's something else going on here which is, is worth mentioning which is that it's not just about uh, predicting which technologies are going to be successful going forwards and which ones aren't, because that, that's almost like backing a horse, isn't it? Uh, but I think there are some underlying trends which just keep going. Uh, and so, for example, the importance of information and not just the technology that, that either comes up with the data in the first place or, uh, or processes it, that underlying value of the information seems to me something that's just going to keep on going kind of almost irrespective of which technology ends up winning. Yeah, that, that, that's absolutely right. And if you look at an organisation like uh, Mott McDonald, we are an information-driven organisation. Really what we're all about is, is adding value to that information and then uh, giving it back to uh, our clients and the, the, the end users of that infrastructure to make sure that they get the benefits from it. It also seems to me that if we can uh, recognise uh, the value of data, of information, maybe recognising the value of the digital twin of the infrastructure itself, mm. uh, then we can release something which is useful for the infrastructure industry. Uh, for example, uh, looking at automation, we can automate a lot of our design processes now. But while we're uh, paid for uh, the amount of time you put into things rather than the value you add to it. So if we uh, are kind of agreeing on that, that context, uh, given that context, what do you reckon are the technologies which are coming through that uh, are going to provide the most value to infrastructure? Yeah. So the sort of things that I think are really going to make a difference, they're already making a difference, are um, collecting data, the technologies that we've got around sensors. Uh, we, we're working with an organisation called Vivacity to look at pedestrian flows and vehicle flows and collect much better information about that. Uh, then you need to move that data uh, to somewhere where you can store it. So the Internet of Things and all the infrastructure that's around it is going to improve and is really important for us. Uh, and then where you store that data and how you manage that data. And as you said earlier, how you, you, you start to look after that and, and realise the value. 
So, so if we can collect that, I think we can make a real difference to uh, infrastructure and add value and, and improve the productivity. So do you think that there's there's work that's needed across the industry to uh, you know, improve the quality of data? Uh, absolutely, yeah. We need to improve the quality. We need to raise that level of understanding about the value of data. I think that's one way of, of raising the, the quality. Um, and we need to manage it much better. And of course, we need to look after it. It's really important that data is looked after, it's kept secure, uh, and only used for the purposes that it's intended for. Um, do you see that there are um, other areas of, uh, of technolo technological change that, that we should be considering for the infrastructure industry? Uh, yeah, there, there's, there's lots. I think another area that's really exciting, and we've got time for today, is, is around the whole uh, area of construction, new materials, new processes, uh, things like DFMA, uh, where we can really uh, improve the way that we uh, construct and then look after our assets. I think that's going to make a real difference over the, the next few years. Yeah, and it's interesting, isn't it? I think that even with those those kind of things, you know, whether it's DFMA or on-site robotics or product-based delivery, all those those um, technologies or, or aspects that relate to, to delivery, mm -hmm. uh, in many ways, they're related back to data again, aren't they? Well, I think this gives us a, a real opportunity. I think it's, it's a really good place to be because we can look at a range of technologies and make sure that we get the best possible outcome. So in some ways, it sounds like it's actually an advantage to have such a range. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's exactly the case because I think it forces you, as we do with our emerging technology strategies, to continually scan the horizon, make sure you know what's coming over the horizon, and then making the very most of it so that you can deliver the best possible outcome and yeah. improve the uh, productivity of our infrastructure as a result. Uh, and you know, may, maybe... Uh, part of what we have to do for innovation is, is understand innovation uh, about adopting new technology, mm. not just coming up with a new technology in the first place. Mm. No, I think mean, you're absolutely right. The, a really good example of that is virtual reality and, and augmented reality. Uh, I think this is fantastic technology, but quite a lot of people just look at it as technology. What you need to do is you need to look at it as uh, what service can it provide what value can it add, whether it's to uh, the design process, stakeholders in the process? I mean, it does feel to me as if we uh, we need to articulate uh, what the stages are in an adoption process. Mm. Uh, and I know that um, we've done some work internally on innovation recently mm. that feels very relevant. You know, that, that idea of, of going from discovery to start with, which isn't blue sky inventing technology, it's identifying the technology that, that might be relevant. Mm. You know, going through an incubation process following that to, to see whether it works and, mm. and develop it, maybe pilot it. Uh, having done that, to move into an upscale mm. time where we, we commercialise it, uh, take it wider across the business. Uh, and, and then finally, the apply phase, mm. where you turn it into business as usual. Mm. It seems to me that, that those four stages uh, are relevant not just to us but across mm. industry yeah uh, and probably the learning we've taken from trying to do that internally is relevant as well because there's no shortage of ideas in what we're done with our clever people and they can take it through that incubation phase so that we prove that it is a viable idea for them making it scale uh, and making it usable across the whole business is a challenge and that's i think exactly the challenge that we'd see in the industry and one that i think we should really work hard to uh, overcome. So thank you very much for, for watching. Uh, hopefully you found it interesting uh, and we'll see you again soon.